Well, welcome back everyone yet again to Paul's Tech News. It is Sunday, so let's catch up on what happened this week. Starting with some juicy but questionable rumors about AMD's Zen 4 based Ryzen 6000 series CPUs, Epic has leveraged the Unreal Engine to make new digital humans called metahumans, which are not scary or creepy at all. And we will yet again venture in the direction of GPU hell to discuss the ongoing global graphics card shortage. But to uh, keep good balance, I've included some Good news on that subject as well. So uh, don't worry, we'll be just chilling with a, a lukewarm beer in GPU purgatory. Cheers. Excellent. Corsair has expanded their new case lineup with the 5000 series, a premium chassis with three versions available, the sleek 5000D, the 5000D Airflow, and the 5000X with tempered glass panels and three 120 millimeter air guide RGB fans. A spacious interior provides room for multiple radiators or up to 10 120 millimeter fans, and there are tons of convenient features for building like hinged removable panels, flexible storage options for hard drives or SSDs, and rapid route cable management guides. Available in black or white, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. Rumors come and go, and they're fun to discuss, but they are still rumors. And this week, a site called Chips and Cheese made some bold but unsubstantiated claims about AMD's next-gen Zen 4 microarchitecture, which presumably will power the Ryzen 6000 series CPUs. Hot Hardware and WCCF Tech picked up the story, so let's sum it up. AMD's current mainstream platform is AM4, and that is end of life, with the 5000 series being the last hurrah for CPUs on that socket. AM5 is next, and if this info is accurate, there will be a Zen 3 refresh called Zen 3 Plus that initial CPUs will be based on for AM5. These will be the first 6000 series processors, and thanks to some manufacturing upgrades, would be maybe 4-7% to faster than the current Zen 3 CPUs. Kind of like the move from original Zen with the 1000 series to Zen Plus with the 2000 series. Zen 4 would then follow Zen 3 Plus with actual 5 nanometer based chips with new architecture that are looking very promising if these rumors are true. It mostly boils down to the reported performance of AMD's next-gen server chips, which are codenamed Genoa, and are going to be based on the same chiplets that will be used for Zen 4 across all CPUs, whether you're talking about mainstream or server. These are already being tested, and, according to the story, existing Genoa engineering samples with the same number of cores and clocks as 7 nanometer Zen 3-based Milan CPUs are up to 29% faster. Now, since 29% is an up to value, you can make it round down to a more like a 25% IPC lift over Zen 3 on average. Then you add in the platform upgrade benefits like the switch to DDR5 and the higher clock speeds expected of the five nanometer chips. They're talking about five gigahertz, possibly across all cores. And the result is a mind blowing potential 40% potential improvement going from Zen 3 seven nanometer to Zen 4 five nanometer. Mind blowing, yes, but again, totally in the rumor phase for now. There is one final bonus to all this though. As PCs move to 5 nanometer for their CPUs and GPUs, maybe even, PlayStation and Xbox consoles will probably still be based on 7 nanometer chips, which would free up some of the competing demand at those fabs. I was going to do another installment of GPU Hell Next discussing the global graphics card shortage, but I do have some moderately good news to mix in with the bad. It's not quite enough for that eventual GPU Heaven segment that we're all looking forward to, so for now we'll just call it GPU Purgatory. So join me again, mortals, as we casually walk the moderately strenuous path to the lukewarm region known as GPU Purgatory 2021. As we contemplate the listless monotony that surrounds us, we'll talk about the good and the bad in the world of GPU news. First, some potentially good news as Nvidia has confirmed the GeForce RTX 3060 will launch on February 25th. The 3060 was announced at CES 2021. It will retail for $330, lol, sure, yeah, right, Nvidia. And it sports 3,584 CUDA cores via 28 SM units, as well as 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 192 bit memory bus. The bus width of 192 bits meant that Nvidia had to choose either a 6 gig or a 12 gig memory configuration for this card. And personally, I'm glad they went with 12, even though it's a little weird that it has more memory than the RTX 3070 or 3080. There is no founder's edition for the RTX 3060, so all we'll see at launch is add in board partner models. Speaking of which, those partner models were already spotted being sold in Pakistan like two weeks ago. Za Computers, an official dealer of pallet graphics cards in Pakistan, had 3060s listed for 120,000 Pakistani rupees, or about 750 US dollars. 
and they were selling them. NVIDIA's control over distribution and retail sales varies by region, so it's unlikely that Zoc computers will face any consequences for this because they did break some agreements, as well as their distributor breaking some agreements. But makes no mistake, demand for GPUs is high worldwide and supply is low, so I very much doubt that Pakistan is the only place where shady bulk GPU sales are happening, even between purchasers and distributors who should otherwise be doing business legitimately. There's a lot of money out there to be had and people are gonna take advantage of that. The global GPU shortage has also compelled Nvidia to apparently resurrect an old classic. The GTX 1050 Ti is returning, possibly providing new builders with a relatively inexpensive stopgap video card solution until higher end GPU pricing returns to normal. Brian from the Tech Yes City YouTube channel made some mysterious phone calls to confirm that retailers in Australia at least are receiving new cards, mostly Asus Phoenix models interestingly enough, and listings have also been spotted in the UK too. While the Pascal architecture that the 1050 Ti is based on already dates back to 2016, these cards are quite functional for 1080 gaming, and they should also have a lot less appeal for cryptocurrency miners who are scooping up cards to mine Ethereum. Newegg currently has uh, about five models listed that are actually being sold directly by Newegg. Most are priced from about $160 to $190, and while they're all sold out for now, uh, several of them do have the auto notify button, which is different from the just out of stock notification button, so that might mean that Newegg expects some new stock coming in soon. But cryptocurrency mining is impacting GPU availability, and while no one can really say to what extent exactly, the fact that we're looking at RTX 30 series laptop shortages is not a good sign. Images have surfaced on social media in China showing Ethereum hunters setting up banks of gaming laptops for mining. Since the crypto has climbed from a March 2020 low of about $107 all the way up to a high of $1,862.13, at least as of Friday. Bitcoin, meanwhile, has gone all the way up to $48,925 and 53 cents. And while Bitcoin mining with GPUs really isn't a thing anymore, you can mine Ethereum with GPUs and then trade it for Bitcoin, which is why the Bitcoin price is still affecting GPU sales. Rounding things out with uh, just, a, just a smidge more of optimistic news, the Biden administration here in the US is reportedly working to help address the global semiconductor chip shortage because it's not just PC gamers who have been affected. In fact, it's probably the auto industry's manufacturing slowdown that has compelled a White House response. But the upshot is that they will be conducting a supply chain review along with developing a long-term strategy to avoid future shortages. And the Semiconductor Industry Association responded quickly with a letter co-signed by Intel CEO Bob Swan and AMD CEO Lisa Su, as well as top executives at NVIDIA, Broadcom, Western Digital, IBM, and others, requesting substantial funding for incentives for semiconductor manufacturing in the form of grants and or tax credits and for basic and applied semiconductor research. And they're hoping this can be part of the upcoming stimulus package. Now, if this leads to investment in US-based microchip fabs that can compete on a level with TSMC, well, then I think it's a very good thing although it's not likely to impact our current GPU shortage situation anytime soon. Uh, congrats though, you guys, you made it through GPU purgatory. Uh, I don't know about you, but I feel pretty so-so about the whole experience. Let's finish up with some tech briefs, now with even more breathability and support. The Asus Q-Latch is a thing you didn't know you wanted. Uh, it's a built-in plastic latching system for M.2 drives. So no more tiny, easy to lose M.2 screws. We're gonna have to test the latch's durability since it does appear to be made of plastic. And this isn't necessarily the first time this has ever been done, uh, but you should expect this feature on some, but not all of Asus's upcoming Intel Z590 motherboards. Next up, I'm trying to play more video games. And the game that I really wanna play is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, and I don't have a PlayStation 4, so I haven't been able to. But I was happy to hear from Reset Era Forums contributor Navtra, who has been right about these things in the past, Naftra is saying that the remake is coming to PlayStation 5 and PC, maybe even soon, with a bump up in resolution as well as new story content. The PC version is what I've really been waiting for, uh, but honestly, it might already be announced. There is expected news coming at the Final Fantasy VII Remake Orchestra World Tour concert this weekend, which hasn't happened yet for me, but it might have already happened for you. So uh, let me know down in the comments section what they said about the Final Fantasy VII Remake and if it's coming to PC. Finally, I just wanted to ask you guys, am I really? a real person? Or am I maybe just a computer-generated animation with some 
voice thrown over the top and everything. That will be even harder to tell now that Epic has unleashed their new MetaHuman creator. Simply use the browser-based app to sculpt a digital actor with a huge range of details, then import the final creation into Unreal Engine for further customization via the features of Unreal Engine itself. The idea is to give game developers access to the kind of facial quality and animations as seen in high-end titles like The Last of Us Part Two. And it looks like they've come a long way. I encourage you guys to check out some of these videos linked in the description. The best part is though, I just see no possible way that this technology could be misused or abused. But there you have it guys, tech news for the week. Your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section down below. While you're checking things out down there, all of the articles I talked about today are linked in the video's description, so if you desire further reading, you can uh, click those. You can also click the like button down there. If you enjoyed this video, check out my store at paulshardware.net for a vast array of quality merchandise options, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thank you again so much everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.